Welcome to our lecture online. So here are a couple of examples of how to evaluate a function. We have two functions. Our first function is right here. f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2, the function of the variable x. And here we have f of x, or the function of the variable x, is equal to a set of numbered pairs. So here we have 2, 6, 3, 8, 4, 10, and 5, 12. We're supposed to evaluate the functions for x equals 2. So what we can then write is this, f when x equals 2 is equal to question mark or f of 2 equals question mark. Again, remember, that means the exact same thing. This just gives you a little bit more information that it's the variable x we're evaluating, where here you may have lost that connection, what the variable was that you're substituting for 2. So now, let's go ahead and evaluate it. So we can say that f when x is equal to 2 is equal to and everywhere you see an x, we're going to replace that x by the number 2. So this becomes 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 2. So this is equal to 4 minus 6 plus 2. So it's equal to 6 minus 6 or 0. So that means when you evaluate the function for the variable x being equal to 2, the result is equal to 0. So the function when x equals 2 is equal to 0 or y is equal to 0 when x is equal to 2. That's another way of looking at it. So let's do it over here. We're going to evaluate the function when x equals 2. So f when x is equal to 2 is equal to. Now we look at the ordered pairs and we're looking for one pair where the first number, the x value, is 2, which is, of course, this one right here, which means that the corresponding function or the corresponding y value is 6, so that's equal to 6. In other words, y equals 6 when x equals 2. Again, the whole reason for doing these videos is to get familiarity with the way we look at the notation of functions, how to evaluate the functions, and how to go through the process, and how to write it properly so we can actually understand what we're doing. And clearly, this means I'm going to evaluate the function when the variable x equals 2, I'm going to evaluate the function when x equals 2, and then you find the corresponding value for y, or the evaluation of the function. And that is how it's done. <laughs> No, because there's only one, one value for two. It's just that if you get something like that, it's something we only do in algebra. You don't see that much everywhere else. I don't remember doing that ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, my wonderful wife here told me that there's one point that could be confusing, and I actually agree. We don't always agree on everything, but this one I do. <laughs> so here, she claims... I had the function defined f of x as being equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2. And here, I have another function defined very differently. And in both cases, I use f of x on the same board or the same page. All right. So sometimes what we could do is to make sure that we differentiate the difference between the two, that this is one function, so we might call it f sub 1. And there's another function, we might call it f sub 2 just to kind of keep them apart. And of course, you need to put f sub 1 everywhere and maybe call this y1. And over here, call this f sub 2. And did I miss one? Yes. Oh, yes, I missed one right there. There we go. And here, call it y2 to differentiate that these are two different functions, two separate functions. Or instead of using f of x there, I could have used g of x. And then there would not be any confusion. Well, we do do that sometimes. We have multiple problems and we call them all f of x. So, but just to make sure that these are different functions, and yes, if you put them on the same page, you may want to denote them differently or put a different number on them. Maybe we could have said this is number one, and this is number two, and so these are different functions, not associated, not related to each other. So, just want to make sure you weren't confused either. 